Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are going to go ahead and get started. I'm so excited to kick off our third and final session of our Iron Virtual Project Exhibition today. We had two more great sessions earlier today um, with, I think, at least 10 to 15 other projects that shared. Um, so for those of you that attended that, welcome back. And for those of you that are joining us new during this session, um, welcome. We're so excited to have you. This event will showcase the inspiring project work and outcomes achieved by iron classrooms around the world. Today you'll hear directly from educators and youth about their iron project work and their final products. Before we begin, let's go over a quick review of some of the features in the Zoom webinar space that we're in today so everyone can navigate and participate seamlessly. So first off and most importantly, you all should have access to a chat box. Um, please find that chat box. This is your way to communicate with other attendees and the panelists. Um, please note that in the chat box, you do want to send your messages to all panelists and attendees. If you send them only to all panelists, then only the presenters will see your message. If you want everybody attending this event to see your message, please make sure you write it to all panelists and attendees. Feel free now to introduce yourself in the chat box, say hello, tell us who you are and where you are connecting from today. We are also live on Facebook, um, so welcome to those of you who are viewing on Facebook. Feel free to comment in the comment section of Facebook if you would like to participate as well. And lastly, um, we do wanna let everybody know that we are recording these events today and we will be sharing them out on our website and social media platforms following the event if you want to watch it again or share it out with any friends or colleagues. Before we jump into the presentations, we did want to share just a little bit about IRN for those of you connecting today that are less familiar with the organization and the work that we do. IEARN, which is the International Education and Resource Network, is a network of educators and youth around the world connecting on global projects. Our organization started in 1988, so we are on our 31st year of global collaboration, which is very exciting. 31 years ago, a teacher in the state of New York wanted to connect his classroom with students in the Soviet Union post-Cold War in order to increase cross-cultural understanding and relationships between those two regions and build bonds and friendships. They connected on, at that time, what was a very high-tech um, device called the Lumaphone that was connected through um, the phone line and it sent very rudimentary video messages to one another. So that's how IRON started 31 years ago. And since then, it has grown into um, this large international network and family of educators and classrooms and youth around the world from over 140 different countries that are connecting and collaborating on online global projects with IRN. These, these global projects are all facilitated and designed by teachers in the network. We have over 100 projects in our platform, the Collaboration Center, that educators and classrooms can join. All of the projects use the model of global project-based learning. The connections and interactions in the projects are all primarily done asynchronously, which means classrooms and students can connect on their own time and in their own time zone. Um, the activities in the projects consist of discussions in forums, so students sign into the platform and engage in discussions across countries and peers around the world around the topic that they are learning about. And then they also engage in various forms of media sharing, where they're sharing their class activities, videos, photos, et cetera. And many of our classrooms also use synchronous connections and connect on video conference with their partner classrooms. Iron Global Projects all connect to very diverse subject areas and language, and all of the projects are aligned with one, if not more, of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We are very um, 
proud to say that we have this strong alignment with the sustainable development goals and every single one of our projects in the collaboration center is required to answer the question of how will this project improve life on our planet. So you will see as we go through some of these projects today what their SDG alignment is. Okay, so we are really excited to share four projects today with multiple classrooms and teachers presenting. Today you will learn about Talking Kites, um, we will share about My Identity, Your Identity. You will learn about finding solutions to hunger as well as one day in the life. So we are going to kick off our presentation on Talking Kites. I'll do a quick introduction to the projects and then I will hand it over to our presenters. So Talking Kites is a project that has been an iron for a long time and has reached a lot of countries around the world. In this project, students make kites to fly as a massive tribute dedicated to advancing the cultural and social dialogue, a symbol of bridging the gap and understanding the other. This will hopefully become a continuous tradition of flying kites with personal and group images of our dreams for a better world, a world of coexistence, tolerance, acceptance of the other, and peace. And so today we have two educators to share as well as a great video to share with everybody. So I would like to introduce Ivana. Ivana has been in IRON for two years um, and she is a primary school teacher in Poland and she would like to share with us a bit about her experience in Talking Kites. So Ivana, I will hand it over to you. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, thank you very much, Rachel. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. Uh, hello, my name is Iwona Kowalik. I am from uh, primary school number 16 in Wrocław, Poland. I'm very happy to have the opportunity to tell you about our project. Uh, so thank you, IN Teams, and big thank you, big thanks to all our partners from all over the world. Uh, our final project uh, is a website with information, photos, and movie. You can visit the website uh, talkingkites.home.blog. Uh, I've joined IAN uh, uh, two years ago and I've started my collaboration with amazing Ruthie Holson from Israel. I've joined the interesting project Talking Kites Around the World in the footsteps of uh, Janusz Korczak. Uh, this year I invited students and teachers from my new school. There were about 140 students and 11 uh, teachers. Uh, first, uh, we talked about our uh, purpose about Janusz Korczak, uh, his work and ideas to encourage them to participate in our project. Uh, please go to the, to the page uh, about us. Um, we uploaded on the project forum some picture, pictures of our school and short presentation about our city Wrocław. Uh, our pupils studied, studied more about uh, children's rights. Uh, please go to the classes on the rights of the child. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first, students answered the question, what rights has every child? They created mind maps to present the ideas uh, uh, and later they, they studied the foundation uh, of children's rights to get to know more. Uh, we talked also about children's dreams. Uh, during the computer classes, uh, please go to the posters about Janusz Korczak. Uh, students were looking for more information uh, about Janusz Korczak, his uh, character, how he worked with children, how he cared about their rights and how he died. Uh, later students uh, created posters about Korczak using uh, Paint Up. Uh, please go to the page Creating Our Kites. Uh, the main activity was creating colorful kites. Students were working uh, in small teams uh, or alone. Sometimes uh, parents help them to create a shape of a kite. Uh, students wrote children's rights uh, or dreams or Korczak's uh, quotes on every kite. Uh, we, see, we received from Israel a lot of beautiful uh, stickers with uh, the logo of our project. Thank you very much, Ruti, again. So you can see them on our kites. And the kite flying day, the final day of uh, our project, uh, was uh, an amazing event for all of us. 
all participants uh, met at the school court to show their kites and to manifest the importance of the children's uh, rights. You can imagine over 140 students uh, running with uh, beautiful colorful uh, kites and I think it was so great uh, day for all participants. Uh, more information you can uh, see uh, on our website. Uh, please join us next year. You will uh, find us on the IAM platform or our website. You will be welcome. So thank you for listening and thanks uh, again uh, to all our partners. Thank you very much. Thank you much, so much, Ivana, for giving us a great introduction to the Talking Kites project. If you want to visit her website, it is very detailed on the step-by-step -step activities that her students did. Thank you. So we are going to share, just to give you a visual of what the Talking Kites projects look like, we are going to share with you a compilation video. We had so many fantastic classrooms submit work for the Talking Kites project that we created a compilation video that includes videos and photos from all of these different projects. So we would like to share that with you now.
As you can see from that video, um, we have a large number of countries and students participating in this project. Um, and we are fortunate enough to get examples of all of them to include in that video. And to wrap up our Talking Kites presentation, um, we have Dorina here um, from Moldova, and she is going to share a little bit about her experience. You saw a video clip of her students in that last video, and now she's gonna share a little bit with us. Sorry, Not Dorina, just give me one minute to get your presentation. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm very happy that I saw my, my pupils, my students in the video. And we are very happy that we uh, participated in this uh, project with many, many other countries. So uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Dorina Vakar from Moldova, an English and French teacher. Um, I'm in, in Iron for, for three years and talking kites around the world, this project I do with my students already the second year. Can you change the... Okay, so here is the, the page of the project from the iEARN platform and uh, the group facilitator, uh, Ruti Hodson. I hope that I pronounced correctly her name. And um, I would like to speak about the stages of the project that we, uh, with my students, had. Uh, first of all, change please the, okay. I would like to introduce ourselves. That's a picture of my school. That, that's our country, Moldova. And with blue, you see our region. Uh, where is our school? It is named Drogia. And that's the national flag of Moldova. Next picture, please. There is a picture of my students. Yes, these are the students from the fifth form from gymnasium number two from Drogia. I uh, participated in the project with these uh, beautiful students. And a uh, change, please. And uh, the first activity that we had, it was a, a lesson on the topic, Janusz Korczak, a life dedicated to children's rights. So, and uh, I uh, had a video for pupils to watch. And then we discussed about uh, this famous uh, Mom, person. Okay. The second activity uh, was another lesson on the topic, children's rights. And um, because they are only in the fifth form, I uh, presented them a cartoon about children's rights. Then we organized the discussions uh, about their rights and also we remembered their duties as uh, children and as uh, students, especially at school. Okay, our third activity, uh, was the um, uh, making kites and writing our messages on these kites. It was very funny for them. They were very creative. And uh, to make this activity, we also um, had a partnership with our um, uh, another teacher, a uh, technological uh, teacher. And the last activity was the... Um, Fly, the fly day when we flew our talking kites. It was on the 21st of March. They were very happy. Uh, you saw um, their faces in the video, how happy they were to fly, fly the talking kites uh, on the sky. 
And uh, as an impact of the project, I would like to speak. Yes, that's a picture of my uh, students just before flying the kites. Uh, we had also the, um, the badges that Ruti has sent to us, and they were happy and proud to wear these badges and to fly their skies. Okay. And I would like to sp speak about the impact of the project. The last slide, please. Okay, the impact and the results of the project, the impact that it had on my students. So they uh, uh, got new knowledge and experience. They increased their skills and achievements. They also improved their cultural awareness because we discussed and we uh, saw many presentations of um, children, of students from different countries. They improved the English language skills because the um, videos that I proposed were in English. They become friendlier, more tolerant and more respectful. And the most important was that they were learned with the world and about the world and uh, it was great fun for them. So uh, I succeeded to, to transform the, the learning uh, in fun. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Dorina. Um, it's really nice to see how it's been implemented in different classrooms. And one thing I love about Talking Kites is any classroom can do it, no matter your age level or grade level, um, and teachers can, can incorporate it into their classroom in a lot of different ways. So thank you so yes. much for sharing. Welcome. We also have um, the facilitator of the Talking Kites, I believe is joining us today, Ruti from Israel. Um, so if you are on Ruti, if you want to type a hello into the chat box to let everybody know that, um, that you are here, we would love to hear from you. Just make sure if you wanna type it into the chat box to all panelists and attendees to say hello to everybody in the chat box, that would be great. Thank you to both um, Ivana and Dorina for sharing about Talking Kites. Um, next up, we want to share a little bit about the project called My Identity, Your Identity. In this project, students are encouraged to explore and research the elements that form their identities. These elements include traditions, as well as famous landmarks in their community, which are parts of their culture and identities. So sharing on this project today, um, we have Ahmed Tuhami from Morocco. Um, Ahmed has been in IRON for three years and he is connected today with his students from Victor Hugo High School. Um, so I will pass it over to them. We do have a video to share. Ahmed, would you like to present for a few minutes first and then share the video or do the video first? Um, I think we should um, we should start presenting uh, presenting first and really great for the last um, for, I mean uh, to be the last but it's not going to be me who is going to be present the whole thing because I brought my students so they are going to do the um, the job that so, is great I'm a student from um, Nicole that we have something like three minutes and two minutes for the video perfect so great. Your microphone is a little quiet, so make sure when your students present, if they could come closer to the microphone and speak loud so we can hear them clearly. Okay, that's fine. Great. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Selma, and today I'm, I'm here to talk about an amazing program that I had the chance to be part of. So it all started in December 2018. We were introduced to, uh, we were introduced to this uh, unique IM project called My Identity, Your Identity which is basically an online exchange between American, Moroccan, and even Qatari students, which took us five months. The purpose behind it, meeting new people, learning about their culture, their daily life, and so much more. A real experience that sounded a bit challenging at first, but turned out to be so much more and so life-changing. Hi everyone, I'm Riva and this is my first uh, year in IRN during this uh, online exchange. We were discovering new cultures, mindsets, daily lifestyles and traditions. 
like uh, the online exchange with the Qatari students that was a way to share our cultural presence, ideas, and opinions. The same for the Americans. We were representing ourselves to each other and discovering the common things between us. Yeah. So, hello everyone. My name is Paula, and I'm here to talk about uh, the online conference and our impression. So, before starting the online conference, we were worried about how to open the conversation and look and choose the topic. But at the meeting, the American students made it easy, and we and the conversation went smoothly. Uh, then um, we, uh, we found out that we had same interest, uh, similar interests. So thanks. And beyond working online, we had the amazing opportunity to have a physical exchange with the American students. We've known new things about them, and they also discovered uh, new ways of life of Moroccan people here in Morocco. They eat nice food, experience Moroccan things, and we spent some quality time with them here in Morocco in some time of their journey. We met nice people from the other part of the world. Personally, I met some other people who are American with Americans during that trip, and we've also had a good trip and learned to recognize each other much more. It was really hard to say goodbye at the end of the trip, because we got really attached to them. As my friends already mentioned, our project went from a simple online exchange to a physical meet. The difference between these two experiences was huge, and I think that everyone in the on the fact that talking in person is way better than exchanging virtually. With that said, the online experience was necessary. We get to know something about each other even before meeting, and that made the whole situation easier. We just started looking for our common points and forgetting about our differences. And at the end, we all came to the conclusion that the beauty of the world lies in the diversity of its people. Yes, well said. So, um, so that's it. So um, this is the whole uh, bit um, about the experience. Now we can play the um, video for the other um, participants hard to see. We hope it's worth uh, sharing. Great, thank you. I'm going to mute you and I'll share the video for you. Okay, thank you. We just want to real face of Muslim teenagers. We just want peace for presenting our project on in front of international students. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Elena, and as Nat said, I'm completely Chinese. I chose uh, specifically this city is just because I was born there. I know that we have sports like soccer and football. Uh, here in, uh, in traditional clothes, we were here in Morocco. Uh, cold, cold Geneva. And uh, it is also in the Dynasty took Marrakesh, Rabat, oh, and Time together because it's been a wonderful experience. We ch exchange our tradition. 
there was absolutely nothing I should worry about. Uh, when you speak, you feel that you're natural. We're really open. We start talking immediately and all of today. Way off the uh, we're in their clothes. <laughs> Seeing you guys was super energizing and like your energy kind of was contagious. Well, I had a common interest with yes, me. True. Very patient with my pronunciation, especially with my name. I'm very helpful. Wow. That was such a great example of an exchange that was both virtual and physical. It was so great to um, see the students in action in the video. I also see that Steve Weisberg is on today watching um, the US teacher. So Steve, you're welcome to type a quick hello into um, the chat box as well. Um, to the students in Morocco um, and Ahmed, if you want to just take a 30 seconds or a minute for any parting thoughts you want to share, you're welcome to. Okay, thank you. So I think that the experience has been um, really, really interesting because the students uh, from both the past, I mean, the American students and the Marvel students have wanted to benefit from this um, cultural exchange, both um, when it was virtual and when also in the course of being, I mean, during the physical exchange. Both um, students from both parts have, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, corrected so many preconceived ideas that we used to have with us, which are the cheese for us a kind of um, success. So for us as teachers of English or teachers of any other subjects, we would like really to encourage such um, kind of projects and to make students communicate and interact and have a, a kind of cultural dialogue. And try to um, to um, to uh, let's say um, correct all the uh, wrong images that the media and other sources um, give about um, people from other parts of the world. So thank you, I hope for everything. We hope this experience doesn't stop at this point. We would like to repeat it again and again and again. So thank you all. Thank you for everything. We should be applauding you. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing. And we look forward to see all the future collaboration that your students do. Thank you. Great. Hi. Okay. So we are going to move on to our um, next presentation today. So we have learned about talking kites. We have learned about my identity, your identity. And next up, we have a few presenters to share about finding solutions to hunger. Um, so I have Mary Brownell on video right now, who is our fabulous project facilitator for finding solutions to hunger. Welcome, Mary. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so I am going to hand things over to her to do a quick introductions, introduction about the project. And then we have two teachers on today that will share about their classwork within this project. Thank you, Rachel. Um, hi, everybody. Mary Brownell from just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here in the United States. And I am very... Um, very honored to be the facilitator of Finding Solutions to Hunger. It, it is a project that's aligned, of course, with the second UN goal of zero hunger. Um, but also, I find at times that the project and the teachers in it will also overlap their work in other projects as well. Um, sustainability projects, those involving um, the cultural identities of food, so that teachers who come to study the root causes of hunger also might be involved in other projects and we can make that, that um, connectivity work. The project is also connected to Kids Can Make a Difference. Um, all of the schools listed, this is just a representative example, are um, connected to Kids Can Make a Difference using the resources available on that website and also um, connecting to them to find out 
the out sorts of outreach and actions that they can take place. Next slide. Um, I wanted to say that sometimes um, the project completely includes activities and lessons for children who are of kindergarten age, five, all the way through high school. We had students as young as five years old connecting with different activities that are provided. And also, we can have had teachers involved in the project whose technology um, availability is very limited and teachers whose students are not far from being hungry themselves. And as everyone is welcomed in studying the causes of hunger, we also are looking for ways to that we direct the action as in this slide from Tanzania where other teachers in the project and their students raise funds to help plant trees in this village. Next slide. Mary, your mic is a little low. If you wouldn't mind speaking up or coming a little closer, that'd be great. Can you hear me, Can you hear me now? That's that much better. Thank oh, you. A little closer. Great. Um, the next slide's good. Um, here are the students once again. And if you look close to the slide in the lower right hand corner, there I am on the screen from years ago. Sorry, Mary, I'm going to stop you again because there seems to be quite a bit of background noise. Um, should I? I can certainly change my location. Okay, it seems better right now. Okay, so how is it looks, now? Yeah, it sounds perfect right now. So let's just stay right there and, and hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> Great. I won't, I won't move. Anyway, this, um, the slide in the lower right, you'll see me on the screen. And it is the first time that the children in the school had connected with anyone in the in outside of Tanzania. It was very special to share ideas about um, how to make sustainability more vital in their area, and also just to share their cultural identities. So the project extends beyond just the study of hunger as well. The next slide. Um, among the students, we've had some from Qatar under the supervision of their teacher, Ambreen Meboub, and they have become ambassadors because they didn't want to stop their project involvement when their curriculum time was over. So they have become um, some, uh, they've reached out to students who post to the project board and have helped hundreds of students with their understanding about how to even navigate IRON's forum boards, how to um, answer questions, and just to feel that they're connected, which is something I would love to see continue um, in IRON as we have students who return again and again to our projects. This is just a slide showing a picture of the ambassador girls and um, how important their work has become. Next slide. Okay. A couple of students sent this to the project. I'd like to end my commentary with it um, I, because they were talking about themselves. It's, these were mainly students from um, some from South America, some from the US, and some from Morocco. We step up, we take charge, we won't rest, we create change, we stand together, we are Rafikis, we are silent, we scare hunger, and we volunteer now. Ultimately, the goal is that whatever they can learn about hunger, it will end in action. Thank you. To that end, Grace, you are going to um, speak a little bit about your work in Uganda. I'm very happy to welcome Grace, who's been involved in the project for many years. Thank you, Grace. Is, um, is Grace on, Rachel? Yes. I think so. We just need her to turn her camera on. Grace. 
There she is. Hello. Great. Welcome. We can see you, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. We will we will give you the opportunity to share a little bit about your project for a few minutes and then we will share your wonderful video. Uh, thank you. Hello everyone. It's nice seeing you. Hello Mary, our facilitator. I'm Nabudua Grace from Moraga Secondary School in Uganda. And I thank you all for the wonderful work that you do in fighting poverty, hunger, and inequality. In Ngora Girls, we are working on a project of vegetable growing as a way of fighting hunger, poverty, and inequality. And uh, in this project, we bring our girls together to plant vegetables as a way of supplementing the school diet. And as a result, they improve on their well-being, that is health, goal number five, goal number three, and at the same time, they are fighting hunger, and they are also working on responsible production and consumption. At times, the weather affects our crops, but the students are resilient every time. They keep trying to plant more as they of combating hunger. For they believe that they need to improve the situation because they learn from the bad experiences. We all know that hunger is a global challenge, therefore it requires a global effort. And therefore in that video, you will see the girls in their garden harvesting the vegetables that they had planted as they were fighting hunger and also improving on their income by selling some. Thank you so much. Hello, Mary. Great, thank you for that introduction. And we will go ahead and share your video with the audience. Please do. working on sustainable development goal number two of ending poverty. So far they have been growing vegetables to supplement on the school diet and today they are excited that they are harvesting the vegetables that they have grown. But at the same time they are preparing for the next season by planting more vegetables. These vegetables once eaten, they are nutritious. They also help to actualize the goal of responsible consumption and also goal number three, health and well-being. Get the book. Oh, you don't want you can do a Fiona. I like growing vegetables because they are source of income, they are source of food, and they are source of and they are the source of what they are source. Those source of food values to the body, especially to girls like Dodo, because I like eating them. And also, the source of income to me when I said the and 
And I also like growing coffee. This vegetables to provide sauce to the to the community. So Mora Girls is a, a school that is geared to implementing sustainable development goals, and the more so, it is helping children to acquire the 21st century skills of becoming responsible citizens, critical thinking citizens, hardworking, collaborative. As you can see, they are working in a team. So we help the girls to learn the 21st century skills and we are excited about it. We thank our partners, the digital promise that helped us to acquire the 360 degree camera and the girls are excited about making their media to promote sustainable development goals. We are very grateful for that opportunity and we hope our girls will be responsible enough to participate in many other projects that will come along the way. My name is Nakua Grace, the facilitator, the educator of the IAN project of sustainable development goals and the digital problems. Wow, what a great example of putting into action the SDGs um, and the work that's done in the Finding Solutions to Hunger project. That's fantastic. Um, we have just a minute um, before we need to move on to the next presentation. Grace, I was wondering if any of your students wanted to share quickly. Yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Bako Katharine from Raga Secondary School <laughs> in Uganda. Uh, we are carrying out uh, agriculture, that's uh, uh, growing vegetables like dodo, skumawiki, spinach, cabbage, tomatoes, it is so we are really grateful for all that could help us to earn some income to help to help our to help ourselves actually okay. like for buying some needs, even if it is a source of food, food values. Yeah, that's thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing and for um, letting us share that beautiful video of you and your students taking action on the SDGs. Yes. Thank you so much for the kind words, the comments. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Next up, we are going to um, see what another classroom in Brazil um, is doing with Finding Solutions. So I will let Mary introduce our next presenter. All righty. Um, Marsha has been working with um, both other teachers as well as some students um, as a pioneer in the project. Um, it, it, she's been involved over several months and it's, it's been um, wonderful for the very first time to work with her and to discover some of the um, different challenges in um, fitting classroom work, project work into classroom work. So Marcia and I have had many wonderful exchanges in, about, in attempting to adapt the lessons that the project provides, which is something that's very important, that these lessons and topics are completely flexible. I want everyone to know that, that um, and Marsha's work is a great example of, of how to do that, how to work with fellow teachers who may had, maybe never had done project work before, and she figured out how to have that happen. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to her, so. Um, she can explain more about that. Thank you, Marsha.
Thank you, Mary. You are such a great facilitator. Can you hear me? We can, can hear you, but we don't see your video. If you could turn your video on, that'd be great. Well, just a second. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mary, so much. Mary is a fantastic facilitator. She helped us a lot. And today, there is one student here from the project, Jason. Uh, his name is José Alberto, and teacher Jason is also here. So, uh, I'm doing my master's thesis, and Jason and Thais accepted me to collect data in their classroom. So, we, start, we decided to work with the IRN project, Finding Solutions to Hunger. You can go to the next. Um, we worked in two public language centers here in Federal District. One is Silchi in Taguatinga. Uh, that's the, on the left, you can see teacher Thais and her students. And on the right, teacher Jason and his students. Um, so, Taguatinga and Ceilândia are the cities. Next, please. So we did some activities, uh, some tasks with the students suggested by the project. I'm just going to show you a few ones. And for example, this one was for the students to become aware about inequality related to hunger in the world, inequities, for example. 60% of the population, of the world's population, have uh, uh, enough to eat, to eat. but 15% uh, of the population, they don't have, I mean, they have more than enough to eat. And 25% of the population um, do not have enough to eat. So you can go to the next slide, please. We had a breakfast here. And then after this activity, we went to the poem, The Great Tablecloth by Pablo Neruda. It's students, you can go to the next, please. It's students at Silch, they, they illustrated some verses of the poem. Next, please. And finally, at the end, they had their tablecloth. Next. And that was their tablecloth. And at uh, Silk's students, yes, you can go to the next, please. Uh, Jason can talk about a little bit because he was the teacher in that school. Hello, everyone. Uh, this project was quite challenging because the students, they have been learning English for only a year and a half. So, they're beginners. The topic is not an easy one, easy one. It's kind of difficult, but it was worthwhile because at the same time they improved a lot in the, the language, learning the language. Uh, also the topic, we ended up thinking about things that we hadn't thought about, for example. Uh, the local media doesn't cover very much this issue, although we have uh, hundreds of people going through hunger in our city. So the tablecloth, the idea was to illustrate on empty plates uh, each part of the poem. So it's kind of like what Thais did, but we did it on plates and forks. You can go to the next, please. N next. You can go to the next. I put, those are the spoons that we talked about. Next. So that's how the tablecloth was in Ceylandia. Okay, next. So the idea was that the students work with an oral project in the classroom as well, with some different topics, like unemployment, social disparities, corruption, and food wastage. You can go to the next, please. And then they had oral presentations um, in the classroom. Yes, you can go to the next. And 
we had a final question. What can we do to help? At Silt, we asked donations, food donation, and we went to a very poor area near Brazil in a city called Estrutural. So we went to a nursery school uh, to donate some food for the children there. Next. And Jason decided to plant flowers at his school at Silky and uh, for pollination because if we don't have bees we are not going to have food anymore now jose alberto uh, one of the students is going to talk a little bit about the project this project is a different experience here's for students and it's good because it makes us be think make us think and this is important because we can't change the world just in one step. We have to think at first what we can do to help in the more near of us, the more the near of our, um, what we can do to help the ones who are near. An uh, example, I was in the bus coming here today and I see a guy asking for money, begging for money to eat because he didn't have nothing to eat. And this is a common problem, not here just in Brazil, not in Brazil, but in the whole world. And we can't just think that we are not seeing that. It's a problem that we have to discuss. We have to think what we should do to solve this problem. And we had also an international collaboration with teacher William from Canada. He was, he and his students, collaborate online with us. It was an interdisciplinary project because uh, he teaches math in French. Thank you very much. And he was in Canada. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I have seen students do the hunger banquet and that poem before, but I have never seen a class visually represent the meaning of that poem like you did on the tablecloth. Um, I loved that. All right, thank you so much. Um, we are close on time, so I wanna make sure we have enough time for um, our students from Algeria to present. So we are going to shift over. Um, they are going to be presenting on one day in the life. Um, so I'll do a quick introduction and then I will hand it over to Ali and his students from Algeria. So one day in the life is one of our iron projects that focuses on photography and video and artwork. In this project, students exchange this media and the media describes days in their lives. Um, they take pictures and photos on what their school looks like, what their class looks like, what their daily life looks like, and then students engage in discussion and make cross-cultural comparisons about that media. So today we have um, Ali Hamdani and his students sharing. Ali has been in Iron for two years um, and they are located in Algeria, in Bouillon. I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but I will let you introduce your school and your class. Um, I'll give you about two minutes if you want to give an introduction to the project and then we'll share your wonderful video. I will hand it over to you now. Uh, let's uh... yeah, you can go ahead and share you if you want to introduce your project and your experience in the project and then we yes. can share the video. Uh, let's talk about first. Let's introduce myself. Uh, my name is Alhamdani. I'm an English teacher at uh, the School of High School. Uh, my students and I work on a one day in the life project uh, via bridge program. Okay, it was uh, wonderful. We make uh, we made uh, photographs, videos, and we share many video conferences uh, in all over the world. We are uh, so glad to, we are uh, so glad for giving us a chance 
to join the Icon team and Icon community. Uh, and uh, for me, especially, I love to share, the, I love to talk with native speakers. That was a occasion to learn new cultures, not to know new cultures like this, but again that we, we see new cultures, they talk about their cultures. It's good to know new cultures by by their people. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so excited to, uh, to participate on the next project, uh, uh, the International Book Club. Uh, I think it's going to be good. Okay. Yes, uh... And uh, thank you, thank you for uh, letting us uh, show you what we can do. Uh, and if you have any questions about it, share in here. Thank you. Great, thank you so much for that introduction. We will go ahead and share your video with the audience. Hello, we are Ali Hamdani's team and we live in the planet of course. Well, where are we? We're in the okay, let's go to Africa, let's go. So we're going to Africa now, to Algeria. After that, where is this is Abayal and this is Bulam. This is our teacher's home. Yes, it is home. We work here. Let's see what is happening inside the home. Hello, this is my teacher, Ali Hamdani. And hi. And this is me, Abdulhab Khayyad. And this is the team of the project. Muhammad, Abdul Qadir, and Badro. And we are too happy to join the IRN community to learn with the word, not just about it. The youth discussion was the first thing that you do. It was a kind of hard for us because it was the first thing that you did. This is Adiru's work. This is just one example from our work on youth discussion on the IRN project. This is what we live. We posted three posts because Adiru and Badro works on group on this. But me and Mohammed works as individual work. This is Badro's and Adiru's work. And this is my work. We went to the Rams Cobble. We spent a lot of time to get a good photo for it because there are a lot of tourists there to get uh, photos and uh, see it. And now it's time to speak about the second week, what we eat and drink. And this is an example from our work. This is Qadir's work on the week of what we eat and drink. And this is Orfis. I think that I spoke about Orfis before. Actually, I cooked that food with my hands. I spent a lot of time to do that. Now, it's time to speak about the third week, our community. The third week, we did it as a team. Me and Muhammad and Badru and Qadiru did the same work on Muhammad's profile. Now, we will speak about the fourth week, personalities. This is the fourth week's work. This is a big shop in our city and these animals are the most that we have in our city and these people are working on a roof. And of course we collaborate with a lot of teachers, especially from US, like uh, Nicole and Tyler and other teachers. And these are some examples. Guys, what is your primary language? Since you are from different uh, countries. You are not Americans. I would like to know if you guys had any holidays that were like uh, the birth of Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Eid uh, al-Fitr. It's after Ramadan. Directly. Eid al-Adha. Anyway, thank you for paying attention. And this is the end of the work. I've watched that video a couple of times now, and it makes me smile every time. Um, I love how you use humor in, in filming your video. It also really does a really nice job of showing what the project looks like in the forums and your communication and the media you are sharing. Um, and that was really, really nice to see. Thank you. Thank you. 
Great. Um, we're going to wrap it up in just a minute. Um, Ali or your students, do you have anything else you would like to share before we finish? Okay, before I finish, uh, I want to tell you something very important. Uh, uh, when we collaborated with uh, Nicole and her kids uh, from East Virginia, uh, last July, uh, they sent us a package of uh, gifts and it, uh, it was uh, something exceptional. It was it is the, the top of the bridge program. Uh, it means, uh, let's talk about something human. Okay, I just want to say that uh, I am so glad and I want to say thanks for giving us the opportunity to get to, to talk to native speakers about different topics. Actually, I used to talk to native speakers, but just about one topic, it's video games. I talked to them with the online games, but I didn't talk to native speakers about, uh, about all that. We talked we talk about everything, everything, not everything, of course, but we talked about the different topics. I didn't know everything, but I'm going to talk about native speakers, to native speakers about them. It was a great experience. I love to participate in IRM Bridge last year, and this uh, this is our second year. We wish to thousand people, another seven, participate in another thousand people. Actually, we're gonna die. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna die before. <laughs> great, thank you so much, and. Ali, that's great you shared that you did a package exchange with Nicole's class. Um, that's another great idea for classrooms that are connecting virtually if you also want to do some sort of a physical mailing to exchange with one another. Maybe the next step for your class is a physical exchange where you come to the U.S. or students from the U.S. come to Algeria and visit you there. We hope so, actually. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, well, we are seeing all of our great presenters come back on camera now, um, which means that it's time to wrap up and say goodbye. Um, first off, I want to thank everybody who attended today for joining and listening to these presentations. Um, I want to thank Mary for coming on special to introduce the Finding Solutions to Hunger project. Um, and then most importantly, I want to thank all of the presenters today um, who presented about their great project work and thank you for doing this work and engaging your students in wonderful iron projects it's so great to see how this work is actually happening and um, taking action in the classroom and in your communities so thank you all so much um, we will have the recording of this to share out afterwards um, and we hope that all of you attending and joining today will continue to do fantastic iron projects in your classroom moving forward. So we will, um, you are all unmuted. So I want to give the presenters one last opportunity to all wave and say goodbye to those attending. Hi everyone. Thank goodbye. you. Goodbye. goodbye. Thank you everyone. Bye. <laughs> Great. Thank you all so much. Goodbye from New York City. Bye bye. See you.